there was a video that was sent to me and it featured, amongst others, Annie Lennox and Emma Thompson. And it was highlighting human rights violations in Nigeria. And this is part of a campaign that's being run in, on social media. And I'm joined now by three people involved in that campaign. Dr. Shola Moshogbamimu, Nels Abbey and Femi Oluwole. Thank you so much for all of you for joining us this evening. Um, first of all, I, I want to ask you, and I, I don't know how I'm going to do this because there are three of you. So maybe I'll go to you first, Shola. Can I ask you what it is specifically that you are raising awareness of? What is happening in Nigeria right now? Thank you, Natasha. Thanks for having us. Um, it's really important that we highlight the ongoing developing genocide, ongoing um, religious and ethnic violence going on in Nigeria that has led to the displacement of you know, millions of Nigerians, has led to the deaths, and I, when I say deaths, I mean killings of, um, of people. In, in fact, that disproportionately impacts women and children at the hands of extremists, um, whether this is Boko Haram, and ISWAP. ISWAP stands for Islamic State West Africa Province. So just to give you a quick snapshot so that you understand what's going on, this has been going on for decades. And as far as we are concerned, it is now time for the international community to kind of like get involved and especially for British taxpayers. So just to give you a quick snapshot, at the beginning of 2024, we saw over, you know, over a thousand people in Nigeria killed by, uh, by these extremists. And there were over uh, 500 people who were abducted in including students, all right? In 2023, there were over 3,000 people killed by Boko Haram and Iswab. And about 1,500 schools in Northern Nigeria have closed their doors. And, and, and that has led to 18.5 million children in Nigeria nationwide being deprived of education because of the religious and ethnic violence. And um, I, 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 at the point of 2022, in fact, Nigeria became home to 3.6 million internally displaced people. So you can imagine in 2024, that number has gone higher. We launched this petition on the 1st of October, which is the 64th um, anniversary of Nigeria's independence from Britain. And on that, you know, following that uh, petition, Boko Haram struck again, slaughtering many um, farmers in the north. And this came shortly after Nigerian President Tinubu and the governor of the state, um, Governor Zulum, assured the public that there was improved security measures. The security crisis in Nigeria is not just a Nigeria thing. It, has, it, it, it poses a significant risk regionally and internationally. And I'll just open you know, for Nels and Femi to also give you um, more information on this. Oh, oh, coming to you next, Nels. Thank you, Shola, for that. Coming to you next, Nels. Um, why is it, do you think, that the Nigerian government aren't taking more action on this? I think, sadly, there's, a, there's, it's, um, there's so many facets to it. It's hard to narrow down into one particular thing. The Nigerian state in general has proven to be largely ineffective and has, largely, has proven to be essentially more concerned with resource control than with actual administration and, of course, the the key issue of government, which is um, security, securing the people, um, securing the citizens. So that presents one significant issue too. But sadly, it has proven time and again, for those of us who've experienced some of these disasters, and I think there's many facets to this too. So there's the religious element of the, of the terrorism that Nigerian people are experiencing, there's the political element, and then there's the financially motivated element too, which is some people who have gone into, say, for example, kidnapping people in order to attain ransom. Um, and in all three of those elements, sadly, sometimes there have been whispers of people within the actual state playing some form of role within it, um, whether it's for financial gain, political gain, or religious supremacy gain or so. So it presents a very, very significant and bleak situation that we just have to take very seriously. And I think to our listeners, to your listeners here, Natasha, and thank you so much for the airtime to about two hours to bring this up. But I think it's very, very important that we all know that, look, Nigerians are brilliant people. They really are. That if you've known a Nigerian, so you'll probably give you know two Nigerians, you'll know somebody who's really, really brilliant. But the problem we the problem we've often seen is that these people often have to leave the country in order to attain their true value. And if Nigeria could be allowed to become great, so it would be 
a very great benefit to the world. But if Nigeria continues to descend into um, into all sorts of um, forms of terrorism or so um, and serious violence that people continue to flee, you will see these people increasingly showing up in places such as Britain when they don't really want to, but they're left with no choice to. So these are the elements we're speaking of before we start to speak of climate change, amongst other things, too. So I think that we find ourselves in a very, very difficult patch, um, a very, very difficult patch, a very difficult situation that we have to do our best as as society, both in Britain, Nigeria, around the world, or so, to recognise this problem and try and come together and resolve it once and for once and for all. Nels, thank you so much. And and Femi, coming to you now, I, I know that a key part of this campaign is calling upon the UK government to do more. What role can the UK government play in in addressing this crisis? So the UK government, uh, thank, thanks for having me, Natasha. Um, the UK government has a security pact with Nigeria. There's also many, many diplomatic, diplomatic relations. We do, we do trade with Nigeria, etc. And it's about making sure that we actually prioritize the human rights of people in Nigeria in those discussions. So the security pact includes things like the exchange of information, working with on on te- technology development, those sorts of things, providing even including providing weapons. So in that sense, we have the ability to say, do, if you want to continue with this relationship please prioritize this X, Y, and Z. And the reason why this is important for the, for the UK government is because, frankly, a lot of people in this country are tired of having this tired old debate about refugees and what to do about refugees when we're not actually dealing with the problem upstream. We keep having foreign policies in countries um, far away that don't regard the human rights of people in those countries. And then, surprise, surprise, those countries end up destabilized. And then we end up with people trying to flee those areas, and some of them will end up here. The majority, of course, as we know, same countries nearby, but some of them will end up here. Whereas, in fact, if we had prioritized human rights, we, we wouldn't be seeing that as much. We've seen that with Afghanistan. We've seen that with Iraq, Syria. We're now going to definitely see it with Gaza when people are trying to flee there. I hope that we can at least learn a lesson with Nigeria. We have a government in charge that is supposed to be the party that's more in favor of human rights, where we can, we, the best we can hope for is that they would actually prioritize this now. Thank you so much to all three of you for joining us this evening. That was Dr. Shola Mosh Chogbamimu, who's a lawyer and political activist, Nels Abbey, social commentator and author of Think Like a White Man, and Femi Olawole, who is a political commentator. And Shola apparently wants to say one last thing. Shola. Uh, Thank you, Natasha. If the listeners can please go to www.stopnigeriagenocide.com. Again, www.stopnigeriagenocide.com and please sign the petition. This is a petition that has the voices of Annie Lennox, Emma Thompson, Nigerian actor um, Kate Henshaw, Lord Simon Woolley, uh, you know, Baroness Saida uh, Varsi, and many other activists backing this campaign that we get the UK government to put pressure on the Nigerian government or else there will be sanctions and all of these things we clearly listed out on the petition. So please support the campaign. Stop NigeriaGenocide.com. Thanks, Shola. Thank you so much. And if you do want to support the campaign, then Shola's just given the information there of where you can find it. 